Well, hello, I'm Rylan, and I'm here for my first ever State of the Channel address. Um, I'm inside my little ministry campaign here just to provide an interesting background while I talk for some interesting uh, graphics to look at. The first thing is, uh, so you're going to notice the channel is going to slow down a little bit probably over the next 10 days because I'm going on my honeymoon. Um, so I've got a few videos that I'm going to schedule to upload. You know, I had pre futures over that from the Menace of the campaign. Um, but, you know, let's face it, I was uploading sometimes like close to eight videos a day, shooting close to eight videos a day, and obviously I won't be doing that when I'm in Hawaii, so sorry for that, for those of you that enjoy me pumping out stuff at a rapid pace, obviously I'll be going back to that uh, when I come back, uh, but until then, you know, the pace will slow just a bit, um, also regarding, um, you know, Im Imperator Rome, beautiful game. I'm absolutely loving it. I mean, the changes they made in 2.0 were a big deal. I am sad that Paradox has abandoned developing it. You know, we can pray that one day they'll go back to it, but the odds of that are pretty much nil. Uh, most people would probably assume. So, uh, regarding kind of the future of the channel, obviously I've made, pumped out a few Hearts of Iron series, start with the Germany one, and then now we've finished our USA one. I still have to complete the British and the Soviet ones. Soviet ones in a very dire situation, so I'm going to enjoy seeing how that one goes. And the Brits are all in a different situation of their own. My only fear, and why I might take a little bit longer on the British campaign, is that it might start looking... It is, parts of it looks very similar to the U.S. campaign, and I'm worrying it's just going to look like a, a U.S. campaign redux for a lot of people. So that's why I'm trying to give it a little time. You know, I'll finish it when I come back. But other than that, you know, in my description, I try to tell people, hey, you know, I play to the end, I stick it out, I don't abandon games. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, getting invested in a storyline of a series and then you know, losing it, you know, midway through, especially if it's, you know, still interesting. So I'm not interested in letting that happen. I just know I'm pretty safe on Hearts of Iron, letting some time pass on it because they haven't even started. They haven't even announced the next DLC, haven't even done a single DLC for the next deal or next dev diary for the next DLC. Um, except they did one dev diary on like telemetry, but that's, that's nothing DLC specific. So I don't have any warnings about, Hey, get your rearing gear. Uh, that being said, I would like to wrap up one of those campaigns probably within a few weeks of me coming back. So, just in case Paradox does decide, hey, you know, here's the new DLC. We're going to get firing up here. I don't have to worry about it because one of the issues is, you know, with new DLC, with new patches, it breaks old save games. So, I obviously do not want to have broken save games because that will force the abandonment of a series. Uh, one of the advantages of playing a game like uh, Imperator here is I don't have to worry about, you know, because it's a dead game, it's no longer, probably no longer development is the better way to phrase it. Um, I don't have to worry about patches coming in and breaking everything I've been doing. So, because I don't have to worry about that, I can, you know, kind of take my time, start, pick it up, you know, put it down, see how, you know, I'm liking it, and kind of go at my own clip. Which, as you've noticed, has been quite Fast and Furious, hence the title. Um, I've just really, really liked Imperator to Rome. I like how they simulate the populations and like how you build up your empire and build and found cities and found metropolises. And it's a, you know, game looks pretty good too. It's just, you know, fun. I mean, yes, it's basically kind of a blob simulator, just to be 100% real, but, you know, so was this actual period of time. <laughs> it was a blob simulator with people running amok and trying to put together huge, huge, huge empires. So, um, final part of the channel, and probably the biggest, or this video and biggest reason for the channel I'm doing this, is I would like some input or like to see what some people are thinking, um, you know, regarding, you know, anything they'd like to see. Like I've said, I've mostly kind of stuck to Paradox games. I took that brief, uh, uh, departure, let's call it, into doing, uh, AG Odds to End, end All Wars, the World War One game when my computer is going to handle nothing else but that. Um, I don't think a single person has watched one of those videos, and I don't blame you if you're not interested in that. It is a very um, acquired taste, to put it nicely. Um, but I am curious in seeing you know, what people would like to see, because especially I am getting a little bit short on historical playthroughs to do. 
in Hearts of Iron 4. You know, obviously I could do in Italy, and I could do in Japan on cranked up difficulties, and that would be new and unique. Um, especially Italy, I think, might be interesting. Cause I've, Japan, I've at least messed around with once. Italy, I've never messed around with on cranked up difficulties. So it would be new, it would be raw, and... You know, I would not be surprised if in either of those playthroughs I have to basically just go on the defensive and I'm waiting for the allies to come kill me. But we will see how, you know, I'd like to gauge if there's any interest in that. Because I've got some interest and I will probably end up doing one of them after at least one of the Hearts of Iron series, you know, is complete. Because I've got two finished, two outstanding. I'd like to get one of them finished. Because like I mentioned, I don't want to have a whole bunch of outstanding campaigns and they drop try to drop a DLC on me, then there's no way I can finish. Um, but, so those are kind of some of the things I'm looking at, at least for Hearts of Iron. Then as far as other Paradox games, I only have the most rudimentary skill in Victoria 2. Um, so you'll probably never see me playing Victoria 2, especially because we've got Vicky 3 on the way. Um, I'm just going to wait for Vicky 3... You know, hopefully it's a good game. With Vicky 3, I'll have to maybe walk a tightrope in between playing immediately as, as soon as it comes out and maybe waiting for some patches that fix some glaring errors. I don't know how bad it's going to be from Paradox. Um, obviously, sometimes they release games, and they're really good. Sometimes they release games, and they're not very good at the start. Um, I just, I, I have no way to gauge it right now. I'll probably have a better sense when, you know, they start doing their dev diary, or not, their video diaries, you know, where they actually are just doing gameplay. You know, you've got streams of gameplay. Um, until then, it's, that's just going to be really, really hard for me to gauge. Because, like, Imperial Rome, I didn't even buy until 2.0 came out. Why? Because the game just looked god-awful. I could tell. Um, you know, I just had no reason to go get it for a very long time until they made a bunch of sweeping changes and suddenly became a great game. Um, some other games I could go into, of course, I've got EU4, which was the first ever Paradox game I played. Um, EU4 is... Uh, I, I've mostly complete, complete in the sense of I've got all the DLC with the exception of I don't think I have Origins. No, I know I don't have Origins, and I know I don't have Leviathan. Other than that, I literally have all the DLC, so I would be playing, you know, a complete version of the game. Um, the reason I played Imperator, Imperator here without that Alexander DLC is it doesn't seem like it really adds much. The only things I'm missing is Metathy, is I'm able to know, I'm not able to build a Great Wonder. Okay, that's one thing. And then my Legions, I can't give them little fancy dedications other than the one they start with. Other than that, my game, I'm pretty sure, is about 100% the same without that DLC. Um, with EU4, I would be concerned that... Because I like trying to play a version of the game that other people would be playing. So the game, uh, you, what you see me do, what you, how you see me playing is exactly how you'd be playing. So, because I don't do the highlight reels. I may, I may do one eventually, but I'm not doing any highlight reels. I'm doing long-form playthroughs. You know, if you buy this game, you will be playing it how you see me playing it. Obviously, with different strategic choices. But, you know, what you see is what you get kind of thing. So... Part of me is, you know, would like to hold off and get those DLC out of sale because let's face it, Leviathan was a complete shit show. Um, so I'm a little hesitant to try to play EU4 because of that. We'll see. I also have CK2 now. Please note that is a two, not a three. And CK2, I've got every single DLC for completely finished. Um, I like my CK2. You know, with a heavy dose of roleplay, you'll never see me taking over the entire, like, cunt, you know, map in two seconds. But I also have thought about doing that. Um, I do not own CK3. CK3, especially with their pricing of the DLC, has me a little bit worried. With the most recent DLC going for $30 by itself, which is a hell of a big price. I'm not saying I won't ever buy CK3, but it could be like Imperator where I wait for it to go like heavily on discount. Because I think I picked up Imperator for like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks, you know, maybe almost 20, you know, 75% off. So I may wait something like that with CK3. Just because, from what I've seen, I don't see anything that's particularly, you know, just completely groundbreaking that I, you know, I could, there's, there's jollies there that I could not get from CK2. So I'm holding off on that. And finally, the other big uh, Paradox game I've got completely pimped out is Stellaris. Uh, Stellaris, I've got all the DLC except, of course, for the one they just announced. 
and um, shoot, I don't think I have like maybe I'm missing a content pack of aquatic, the you know, creatures or something, something I can pick up real easy. Um, my only concern about starting a Stellaris campaign is they've just announced the next DLC, and I've not been keeping up on their dev diaries, um, so I don't know how close they are to releasing it. So I would probably want to wait until after Overlord came out, and then I would consider taking a look at it. Because, I, I, like I said, my worst fear is I start the campaign, get deep, get people invested. Oopsie, sorry, broken patch. Um, so I don't, I really don't want to do that. And I also do like to try to stay up and play on the most current versions of the game, too. Because I know you can roll back. But most of the time, you know, the versions are getting better, and there's a reason you want to be on those new versions. And you also like to try to be on the new versions, so, you know, when you've got viewers looking at that, you know, looking at your strategies, looking at what you're doing, things make sense, because they can replicate the same things on those versions. Of course, if you're playing a completely different version of the game, you know, they're not able to do that, and I think that, you know, takes away from a lot of the value of, you know, watching long play format streams looking for ideas and strategies. Because um, that's at least what I like to see when I look at, you know, other people doing long format streams. Also, what the heck happened here? How does that only say you have 26 population? I wonder if that's a mistake if they need the data tick over. Because that just seems way, way too low. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. Those are kind of my few options right here. Total War Warhammer 3, I've picked up. I've played a little bit. I have... It's been enjoyable, but then again, I've not gone hard into the Rift of Chaos campaign, which is also probably why it's been so enjoyable. I do like the factions. They play very differently. I mean, uh, you're playing Nurgle versus Slaness versus Siege. I mean, none of your campaigns are going to look even remotely close. The battles you fight don't look remotely close. So I'm very intrigued by it. I do own Warhammers 1 and 2. I have all the DLC for 1, I think. Um, two, I'm missing, like, the most recent ones, like the Paunch and the, whatever, the Goblin one, and I think I'm missing maybe another Elf one. But, that's it, so when, um, I mean, the Mortal Empires map comes out for it, I'll probably give an award, take an award at that. Other games I do have, you know, that I've not played in forever, just taking a quick look here. I could do Civil War 2, that's an AG odd game. Uh, with how well uh, the World War One went over like a load of bricks, I'll probably pass on that. Um, Endless Space 2, not very good at. I've played it a little bit, never finished a game. Maybe I'll do one of those. Oh, Grand Tactician the Civil War. That I will be doing at some point in the future, probably way well down the line. But that is probably the best Civil War game out there. Um, if you've not seen it, I encourage you to look it up. Very slow pace, very methodical, but a lot of fun. Um, other games I do have are like Humankind or Civ 5 or 6, much more board game type games. Uh, more Time City of the Dam is a turn-based tactical game set in uh, the Warhammer fantasy universe, something I may consider. And I did try to upload a Mountain Blade video or thought about doing a Mountain Lord, uh, Banner Lord video. And honestly, I think I'm just going to wait until there's a major mod like the Lord of the Rings mod or a really good Game of Thrones mod that's out there. Um, doing a base game, maybe I'll do it, maybe not. Part of the issue is when I was doing that video, I was rusty as hell. I have not played it in probably close to a year, or at least over a year, actually, now that I think about it. And a good chunk of my gameplay was, you know, me. You know, bandits killing off my troops way too quickly because I misjudged, you know, how the troops could handle bandits uh, even just because it's been a long time. One, it's been a long time since I played. Two, they've juggled up the balancing. And then three, you basically get me just, you know, doing circles on my horse and eventually slowly picking off the guys one by one. But uh, it takes a long time, perhaps not the most interesting. Total War games. Uh, I own every Total War game with the in recent history, I should clarify, with the exception of Three Kingdoms. Three Kingdoms didn't interest me, did not pick it up. So, Total War Attila is my favorite. I may do one of those where I hold out as the West Roman Empire or hold out as the East Roman Empire. Uh, the advantage there is it's a dead game, so there's no developing, nothing uh, going on that would make me worry about getting an update. The downside is those are long campaigns. Very, very long campaigns. We're talking that series, you know, playing as Eastern Roman Empire, Western Roman Empire, or Legendary, will probably be over 100 videos 
an hour long each. So that is one hell of a major undertaking, and I've got to make sure I'm up to it, and we'll see. So going through kind of the other final games, uh, I've got a few of the war game series. I've never played it that much. It's a lot more modern combat, which tends to interest me less. Um, I do have Steel Division 44. I do not have the second Steel Division. I've kind of toyed around getting it, especially the second one, due to the interesting campaign line. But, you know, I've, I've got plenty of games to play right now, so I don't feel like I need to, plump, you know, plop down some money for that. So finally, in some closing thoughts here, uh, I had a fun moment where uh, Comcast, my internet provider, sent me a text of, hey, you've used up 90% of your internet for the month. And of course, I'm you know just two-thirds of the month here. Um, so yeah, apparently Comcast, if you've got Comcast and you're in an area that does the same thing as mine, uh, has a, a limit of 1.2 terabytes a month. And I live with two other people, so we've got a few other people you know, definitely using that limit also. But... Um, that was a kind of a shocker there, so I decided for the unlimited data plan here for an extra 30 bucks a month to make sure this channel, I could keep pumping out stuff on it, but I think that's uh, well worth it. But the fun fact is, if February, even with me uploading a bunch of those World War One videos, did not have such large file sizes, they still would have billed me an extra 60 bucks. Apparently they give you one freebie, so I'm trying to head it off, so then I'm trying to bill me an extra 60 bucks or up to 100 bucks this month, but we'll see what happens. Um, so yes, if you ever, um, I was very surprised that it took that much, uh, data, but each one of my Hearts of Iron videos was roughly about 10 gigs uploading it, and, you know, at least 6 to 10 gigs, and a lot of them were closer to 10 gigs, some even getting up to 12. Um, those little AGL World War 1s were very small, though, data-wise, that's why you, I could upload, you know, so many in a single day. But that kind of took me aback here. So, I've made that change, going through some growing pains here. Like I said, I'm doing this for fun. If I ever made some money off this one day, hey, that would be fantastic. Of course, I'm not going to turn away, you know, making money from a hobby you love. And, you know, I don't think most people would. But the real reason I'm doing this is just love of the games. And, heck, let's face it, I'd be playing these games anyway. Uh, might as well just put some commentary over them, explain what I'm doing. And, you know, if some people like that and get some value out of that for their own games, that seems great to me at least. So, I mean, that's why I look at other people's long, you know, version of playthroughs, because I like getting ideas for my own campaigns of what would be fun to do. Um, you know, I don't, you know, most of the time you're not taking exactly what they're doing, but, you know, you're analyzing it, you're thinking about um, why they're doing things, why they're doing, you know, what they're doing, and, you know, what it would be fun for you to do. Um, this Menace the run in particular, you know, I used to play as Massalia just a little bit when I first picked up the game. Then I played as uh, Hemeroscopian, which is an even smaller version of Massilla. Then I finally found the smallest version and, you know, Menace the here with only nine pops. And I just want to see, okay, how much of a juggernaut could I turn these guys into? Well, let's just go for it. So... Uh, I have done that, I've gone for it, and I'm, I'm loving this playthrough. This is the most fun I've ever had on Imperator Rome. So, I encourage you, you know, if you find things you'd like for your own campa campaigns, take it, run with it, and have fun with it. I mean, that's why I play these games. So, so in conclusion, wrapping up here, yes, the rate of videos will slow down over the next 10 days. I'm going to do the thing where you can set them to... Um, get published or go public in the future so i'm uploading today as many as i can and then i'll have the rest go public in the future for people um but yeah because i will have some downtime here before i start any new series if you have any recommendations or things you'd like me to consider i would appreciate it i'm always looking for good thoughts um now i don't you know just because you suggest something doesn't mean i'm gonna do it um you know but i am interested in definitely taking that into consideration um, you know, or I may take your idea and tweak it a bit, because, I mean, the most important thing is, one, I'm having fun with the campaign, because I'm, I'm having fun, then it's like this Menace Day campaign, where I'm just, you know, constantly uploading things and keeping it going and providing a lot of good content, and then, two, you know, I would be nice to find out what other people would like to see, so, because in particular, I like trying to do things that are a little bit unique, you know, that stand out, where it's not just the same old tired playthrough. And I know there was an, another Menace of Thieves video when I looked up, and I searched it, but it was a much older one. 
I think the game was still in its 1.0 version. So it's very different since that. And then, with, I mean, ironically, with my historical, you know, trying to stay about as historical as I could in Hearts of Iron 4 runs, I've never seen somebody try to stay, you know, completely historical and try to, you know, match up the timings and do it as much as they could within reason. Um, so that's why I was very interested in doing those. That's why I think a historical Italy or historical Japan, even if they ended in defeat, might be interesting just to see, you know, some of those same challenges and see what we can do. Because I've never seen somebody do that. Now, that doesn't mean somebody didn't do it. I'm sure some people have done it. But, uh, I mean, I've looked a little bit, not seen it. Um, so, I'm happy to take ideas. Thank you for watching the channel. I'm glad you're enjoying the stuff as much as I am. And I will see you probably in about 10 days after the recording of this video. Thank you very much and have a good day.